When you walk around in Notting Hill, you might not realise that these picturesque homes you're taking photos of were once stables to horses and stablemen. These are called Muse Houses and they are now worth millions of pounds. They are always located behind affluent homes. This is why they're commonly found in Westminster, Mayfair, Kensington, Chelsea. Wealthy families built these entire rows of micro homes with cobbled streets where the ground floor was the coach house and the first floor was small cramped sleeping spaces. Due to the industrialization of the car, no one needed to ride on horses anymore. But if you've ever rode the central line, you probably want to bring the horses back. Hi, my name's Ollie. I'm an architect here in London, and we're talking about the different typologies of housing in the UK. Episode one of our housing series is gonna be based on Muse housing. During this down period, the number of aristocratic families living nearby declined, and these houses began to fall into disrepair. Muse houses began to be sold to other businesses, such as taxi firms, garages, or abandoned altogether for squatting. These houses lay dormant for a long period. However, there was a big revival throughout the 1960s when people realized you could turn these into legitimate homes, which if you tried renting property in London, is no surprise to you that people are willing to turn stables into accommodation. At the beginning of their revival period, people were purchasing these Muse houses for next to nothing. However, in today's market, the average price that they're selling for is 2.5 million pounds. These became desirable because they're private, quiet and set back from the busy road, meaning they were perfect for Formula One drivers like James Hunt to purchase in the 1960s and park their cars in. Tell you what though, what a good night for a murder, eh? I mean, if somebody wanted to kill anybody, nobody would know if it was a gunshot or a firework. Hmm. This is the house that famous author Agatha Christie bought during the 1920s and became the inspiration for a famous novel, Murder in the Muse. At the top here is a loft dormer, which is a great way of adding more space into a property and is also rumored to be her famous writing room. She loved the muse so much that she kept it her entire life despite moving across multiple different properties around London. It's not uncommon to find quite small windows and large garage spaces that were previously used as the stables. When converting these spaces, it's not uncommon to imagine that you want to create livable accommodation here and potentially look at building dormer extensions into the roof. Here's another example of the small windows that you often find in Muse housing and is one of the only functioning ones to be used as a stable today. I drew a flower on the horse. <laughs> That's cute. Light is also really important in Muse housing. Usually with the windows being quite small, you might want to look at extending them or adding any to the rear facade if there aren't any. An important note to make is that if you are lucky enough to live in a Muse house, when extending or renovating, it can be quite difficult due to the compact size of the streets. People typically look to extend them by either going into the loft or down into the basement. Planning permission can often be quite difficult. As well, they may be listed buildings or in conservation areas, which might be a nightmare to deal with. But if you are living in a muse, chances are you can just pay someone to do it for you. Despite these rows being cookie cutter copies of each other's houses, I think these are some really interesting ways that homeowners have personalized these spaces landscaping, external facades, and how homeowners have created communal spaces in these tucked away streets. So the next time you're in Notting Hill and you're envious of those picturesque arch streets, just remember they used to be full of horse.